In this video, I'm going to share my results using the Radian Telescope's Triad Ultra quad band filter. Okay, so here's the situation. It is a clear night, which is really hard to come by these days, and actually clear like all night long, not like last time. But there's a few challenges. There's a 97% full moon coming up. The uh, We're one day past a super moon. And also the city light pollution that I'm just used to dealing with. That's not really a challenge. That's more just a fact of life. So I've got a rig set up in a very strategic spot of the yard to capture something in Orion. And before you roll your eyes about that, I it's my favorite constellation. And I really, well, one of my favorites anyway, Sagittarius is pretty sweet. It's an awesome constellation. There's so many deep sky targets in there that I want to shoot this winter. Winter targets, Orion, the horse head, M78, the witch head, the rosette even next door in Monoceros. There's so many great objects in there that I wanted to shoot and I just haven't had the clear skies for it this year. And now, of course, it's March and Orion's setting into the sunset as the night goes on. But tonight, I could still actually get two and a half to three hours maybe on a target in Orion. So that's the plan, but it's the filter that I'm using tonight that I'm so excited about. So I say I'm in city light pollution, but what exactly do I mean by that? Well, there's an app you can use called Clear Outside. And if you have your GPS active on your phone, it will actually tell you what your Bortle scale class is. And here it's a six, but I'm convinced it hasn't been updated and it's actually a seven, which is only one class better than my last house, which was basically downtown. That's okay, not complaining. It's just the way it goes. That's why we have filters. But the filter I'm using is claims to ignore light pollution, to ignore, I don't know if it actually says it ignores moonlight. It's a multi-band pass, quad band, narrow band filter, which sounds too good to be true. You'll have to look at my final image to decide. The Triad Ultra filter. Now I had a two inch version of this filter in the summer as a demo. It was sent to me from OPT to try out. I loved it, but I had to send it back because it was a demo. Well, when I was just at OPT in California, I was able to convince them to lend me one again. And I'm using that tonight because I had big plans for that filter under these winter skies because up till now, I only used it with a DSLR in the summer. So this time I'm again using it with a DSLR, the Canon 60DA. I'm really excited to see what this filter is capable of under these extreme conditions of a full moon and Bortle Class 7 light pollution. If you noticed another telescope rig in the background, yes, I'm running a dual rig setup tonight with the EQ8R and the Esprit 150. That's gonna be working on other things. This mount is sitting over here for a better spot to kind of follow Orion around. I'm running out of time to polar align the mount, but I wanted to at least cover what you're looking at here. Some might be very familiar with this setup already. So it's the William Optics Zenith Star 73 Doublet APO telescope. And then of course, I've got my DSLR attached at the back here with the flat 73 field flattener. I've got a 50 millimeter guide scope on top and a little Altair GP cam mono. Remember that old camera? I'm using that as my secondary guide camera for this rig. And of course my beloved old Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro mount. I got to polar align this thing right now. It's prime time polar alignment time. We're running some Windows updates over on this puppy. So I think the ISO setting is at a tolerable level right now. So that Triad Ultra filter, its job is just to completely eradicate light pollution. And honestly, looking at the frames I'm shooting right now on the horse head, I think that it does. The problem with that though, is that it's such a strong filter when using it with a DSLR especially, just you can't see anything it is so dark you can only see the very brightest stars in the sky through the filter in live view so that makes framing and focusing really difficult depending on your method if you have some sort of automated setup can you hear rudy snarling away 
It could be really challenging to find, frame, and focus your target using a DSLR camera with this Trivet Ultra filter, but once you do, my goodness, the light isolating capabilities of this filter are really impressive. Right now, I'm shooting five minute subs at an aggressive ISO 3200 on the 60DA. And looking at the images, it almost looks like a 60 second sub from a dark sky site. It's really incredible. So there's dramatic contrast between the target and the night sky, which is the purpose of the filter. But these are five minute subs at ISO 3200. Can you even imagine what that would look like unfiltered? Here's what my 300 second exposure looks like on the horse head and flame nebula through the Z73 scope, the Triad Ultra filter and the Canon 60DA. So some solid details in there. And look at those nice small stars. I just love that. So what are we on here? Seven frame seven of 50. And to be honest, we're gonna run into the tree, my big old walnut tree. Here's the settings here, ISO 3200, obviously shooting in raw. And uh, I'm using auto guiding and dithering. Look at how sharp those stars are. Those are pinpoint stars, baby. That's with this old HEQ5 mount, a manual polar alignment and a really aging guide camera and a 50 millimeter guide scope. So people spend so much time scrutinizing and arguing about PhD2 guiding and all these other best practices and settings. Let's just take a look at the graph here. Honestly, haven't looked at it yet. All right, so about a second. So at this focal length, that is doing just fine. I mean, five minute exposures on this old mount. Nothing wrong with that. So indeed the moon is out now. Oh, is that the moon? No, that's just a horrible LED street lamp. There's the moon, which looks dimmer than the street lamp. So that's gonna shine some more light onto my images. Look at this light pollution. So this is actually, this is perfect. This encapsulates what we're fighting against with that Triad Ultra filter. This is the real deal, folks. And here we have Rudy, who is, uh, if you can see his ears, he is just waiting for something to uh, appear for him to uh, run after. He is just on full alert. Plus, look at his shiny coat. That's uh, the salmon dog food that he gets. Combination of really healthy dog food and tons of exercise. He is one of the healthiest five-year-old labs you'll ever find. 25 dithered five minute subs at ISO 3200 on the horse head with that filter should be pretty decent. Just judging on the individual exposures, I think I should be able to create a pretty decent image. Here's a look at the raw image files, the CR2 files captured with my Canon 60DA DSLR camera. They're 300 seconds each, so five minutes, shot at ISO 3200 using the Triad Ultra filter and through my refractor. So as you can see, the first thing you'll notice as you kind of go through them like this is that the moonlight definitely comes through, which is, you know, not surprising, right? This just broad spectrum white light from the moon. So it's not the be all end all solution just to get around moonlight. So a narrow band filter on the other hand, specific band pass like an HA six nanometer, that's gonna do a better job at isolating specific HA details without that moonlight. Jack of all trades, master of none, right? So because it has those multiple band passes, you're getting in a little bit of moonlight as well. Not a huge deal. And to be honest, looking at this data, it's actually really impressive. If you look at the files here. So this is before the moon has really crested the horizon, compare it to a little later on. Uh, that data looks really good, especially for a single exposure at ISO 3200 with a DSLR. It's also like surprisingly dark in the dark areas. If you, if you shot this unfiltered, on the other hand, it would just be almost pure white, but not with this filter. You're actually collecting really useful details that you'll see in my final image actually turned out to be a really excellent image of the Horsehead Nebula, Horsehead and Flame. So these are the raw image files here using the filter, which I think is really valuable for those shooting with a one-shot color camera or DSLR that uh, these individual subs look so great through the Triad Ultra filter. Now I'll take you over to the final image I was able to process in Adobe Photoshop. So just for an example, this is kind of what it looked like straight out of my stack from Deep Sky Stacker. So two hours of integration, this is what it looked like. And then I was able to take it this far. So that's as 
far as I could possibly stretch the data without blowing things out. And I think it's a very decent image considering it was two hours under these extreme conditions. Like there's no way around that. Full moon, Bortle class seven skies in two hours with a DSLR camera. Those that have, you know, shot with color cameras before DSLRs from the city will know how incredible this result is using the Triad Ultra filter. So I think my results speak for themselves. I really hope that this was useful to you to actually get an inside look at the data behind my final image. Rig number two, we're having lots of fun over on this one. We're running some Windows updates.